and welcome back. Today we are going to be practicing how to record data in a higher level data table. This style of data table will solve all those issues about how do I get my uncertainties um, recorded properly, what do I need to show, um, it will make sure that you get all of those marks for your assignment for your data recording um, and for your uncertainties um, and we're going to form this table by doing a practice experiment. So we are going to design the table. Uh, I'm going to get you to go away and think about what table you would put together with your current knowledge. And then I'm going to show you the table that I think works the very best for higher uh, at higher level. And actually that you'd only need to uh, change very slightly for advanced higher. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to populate that table and make sure we're all comfortable with using our reading uncertainties knowledge and our random uncertainties knowledge. If you're watching this and you haven't gone through the uncertainties seven series of videos yet, um, I would stop now and I would go back and learn those skills before you try doing this style of data table. So as usual guys, you're going to uh, make a set of notes along with me. You're going to need something to write with, a ruler to draw, draw your data table. And today guys, um, for our practice experiment, I was racking my brains to think of um, a practice experiment that wouldn't um, have any of the same measurements as our official uh, measuring the acceleration of gravity experiment that we're going to do next. Um, wouldn't have any of those measurements in it, but it was something that everybody could probably do at home uh, without having to go and buy anything or have anything particular at home. And so I've come up um, with a measuring frequency experiment. Now you might be thinking, I definitely don't have a frequency measure at home. Well guys, I've got you covered. Um, all you're going to do is download this app onto your phone. Okay, it's called Firefox. It is completely free. And, um, and it is gonna do the job brilliantly. Now I would recommend you have Firefox on your phone Anyway, um, as a physics student, it does loads of brilliant stuff for you. Um, for example, a really good one for hire is that it will measure inclination for you. So it will measure the angle of your phone. So if you're doing an mg sine theta experiment where you're measuring the tilt of uh, a slope, rather than having to do um, um, use Pythagoras to get the tilt, sorry, a bit of Sokotoa to get the tilt of your slope, um, this will do it for you. So it's fantastic for that. We are going to use the audio autocorrelation function, okay, um, to measure a uh, note. And to make this note, all you're going to need is a bottle. So a glass bottle works particularly well. Um, I am using, look, I'm being a good teacher here. I have an alcohol-free uh, glass bottle here. And all we're gonna do is blow across the top of our bottle. So if I show you my Firefox application. Okay, I'm just gonna increase, oh. I'm just gonna increase the brightness of my screen. There we go. Um, so all I do is press play. And it can tell me whatever frequency the phone is listening to at that moment. So we can see the resonant frequency of my bottle, my empty bottle is around 150, 151 hertz. Okay. Um, and the experiment we're going to do is seeing how frequency varies with the volume of water in your bottle. So all you need to do is measure out different volumes of water with a measuring jug, a kitchen measuring jug, and fill your bottle. If you really can't measure volumes of water, if you don't have a measuring jug at home or anything that will measure uh, volume at all, um, you could do, uh, you could just do like cups of water, cup one, two, three, four cups. Um, you could split the bottle into fractions and just fill it up uh, with different fractions and see if, if the, you know, anything, any of these will, it will be fine to get a relationship. It really doesn't matter. So let's pop down our title for today's lesson, which is data tables. 
and I apologise, I've got quite cold hands today, so my, uh, my writing won't be the best. Uh, data tables, and we're going to do a practice experiment. I hope that's the correct spelling of practice for this. I never know. I-C-E, I-S-E, one's a verb, one's a noun, you decide. Okay, so I'm going to give you the aim for this experiment and you are going to design a data table that you think covers everything that you need in Hire. And don't worry, I'll remind you of the extra details that have come in from Hire compared to National 5 or any other earlier course. Okay, so our aim is to investigate the relationship between the volume of water in a bottle and its resonant, okay, resonant frequency. So that's what we're investigating, folks. Your data table has to be able to record volumes and frequencies. So let's remind ourselves what are the extra details for data that our data table has to have room for in Hire. So for our data, we have to have at least five repeats. And those repeats are gonna be particularly important in this experiment where um, you're gonna to have to use a little bit of judgment and kind of pick out the number that um, is on the screen when you blow over your bottle. Um, it's not necessarily gonna be something that you can pause, although you can hit pause um, and it'll keep that number on there. Um, but I imagine you're gonna have some variation between your repeats. So five repeats, you need to be able to record your reading uncertainties for your two measurements. Now remember that the reading uncertainty will be the same for every measurement made with that measuring device. So all of your volumes will have the same measurement reading uncertainty and all of your frequencies will have the same reading uncertainty. And because we're repeating and we'll calculate a mean, there will be a random uncertainty. Okay, so these things need to be recorded. Your experiment is measuring volume and measuring frequency. We're gonna stop this video now. You're gonna go away and do a draft data table. And it's really important that you do this, folks, because it is far more, um, it's far more permanent piece of learning if you do something and then you have to correct it. You kind of see where it goes wrong, you see where it's maybe not quite enough, and you correct it to something else. If I just show you the data table that I think is best, you will go, oh, okay, and you'll take down that data table, but there won't be that progression, there won't be that thought process of, why wasn't mine enough? Oh, I see why I have to put this here, and actually doing this a number of times. So I really want you to go now and try and draft a data table that you think has everything it needs in it, to uh, record this data at higher level. You don't have to record the data, just set up the data table and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks folks.